Good evening and welcome to it. This is Chess and Wine without the wine. But please subscribe. Subscribe. My name is Eddie Pila and I'm asking you to subscribe so I can get more wine. You see now your subscriptions. Subscribe and like the video so I can get some more wine. But yeah, so I've got some interesting updates for you regarding the African Junior Chess Championships ladies section. Or as they had um, listed it, the girls section. And it's some controversial things that have happened there that I wish that we could all have an opinion on in finding a way forward or in actually advising in case it happens again in the future for to someone else. Interesting. Let's talk, let's talk about that in a minute. Again, so now, again, we have another update from the Hendrik Dudoit camp. The committee of two, that is Hendrik Dudoit and Judy Maurice Stienkamp, the only two elected members of that um, committee, which keeps on insisting that it is the legitimate chess expo board, expo executive board, which is very crazy. Because it seems like now that we've got an election already taking place on the 25th of November, and now we've got Hendrik Dudoit saying that whatever happens after the, 20, uh, of the 17th of December, if he doesn't get um, uh, feed it to actually overturn their decisions, whether what to wait, 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 we're not, not necessarily overturn, but to, 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 to declare the elections unconstitutional and invalid, he will then go forward into the uh, the court of arbitration for sports, which is in Switzerland. Meaning he is not accepting a loss. He is not accepting a no. Which is the case with Henrik Dudoit, obviously. We never like any election that happens and doesn't favor him is invalid so even with this one he's prepared to say this is not the even though it involves suscock even though it involved defeated so he's now going on to challenge those two upper structures as each as executive board which is crazy because these are two structures that are meant to recognize you and if they say they don't recognize you anymore and they go forward they go ahead and elect other members that they choose to recognize you say i'm going to challenge you uh, in a structure that is above you crazy right like it's so crazy so yes Henrik Dutton is not going to accept uh, any loss he's not going to accept defeat which means we might go back to the situation that we had after 2018 where we have two executive boards running parallel to each other but that may not be the case because if it happens the reason that why that why that was possible was because FIDE was not really that much involved right and then it said, okay, but it's fine. We'll recognize a portion of, uh, uh, we'll, re we'll recognize both of you because you both seem to be presenting legitimate cases. And they went ahead. So there's no way that FIDE, after declaring Hendrik to Toit as, um, uh, as that, that imposter forcing himself into Chess South Africa when the chess community doesn't want him, there's no way that they would still want to recognize him and give him a chance to call himself a chess president and still continue um, in his business of chess. Because we know his business. We know the reason why, I mean, it makes sense. Because we, who would want to force themselves somewhere where they're not wanted? Unless there's something to be gained in that space where they're not wanted, right? Like we know, we know that we know the interest. We know the Fortnite's interest is still a really serious interest that keeps people awake at night. <laughs> But yes, and the reason why I'm mentioning that the Hendrik Dutoit issue is because there has been suddenly another resignation, uh, which I was actually surprised to see that the, the executive, the letters that were coming from Hendrik Dutoit at the bottom, you'd see that have um, uh, Mr. Fungi Lenghang uh, as, uh, as what, as, as what uh, school's representative, meaning he's part of the executive board, meaning he's part of the WhatsApp groups, meaning he's part of their meetings that communicate and make the decisions that uh, most chess community are not happy with. And we know him to be someone who is involved with a lot of pro progressive, uh, <laughs> if I may put it that way, uh, uh, chess engagements. But anyway, so yes, we've had him on the show before, like on Chess and One. You just check out his interview and understand. So yes, um, um, what happened is, first, there was a letter of recall from uh, the, what is this, the South African Schools Chess Association. So the Saska, Saska, South African Schools Chess Association wrote a letter to, uh, what is this place, uh, the, the, I, I think to Hendrik, but it doesn't really say who it's di uh, directed to, but it must have been delivered to them because they responded. So here it's, it goes, uh, DSAO Madam, the recall of Saska president from Saska Expo. What? From Saska Exwood. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, but anyways. 
So what he, well, he it, 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 that must be a, the, the miss. Um, let's let's read and see if it makes sense. So the letter uh, that's regarding recall of Saska president from Saska Expo, we herewith would like to inform you that Saska is recalling her president, Mr. Fungi Lengaka, from the Chess SA Expo led by Mr. Hendrik Tutoid. You see this one, but doesn't make sense. So Mr. Ngayanga will therefore no longer be part of the said committee. He will also withdraw from any WhatsApp groups relating to the to the said committee. Regards, Mr. Alame, that is the, the, the uh, Saska General Secretary. <coughs> and um, it's interesting because while I was looking at the bottom there, uh, the executive of, his, of, of Saska, I see at the very end, Honorary President, Dr. Omar Essa. And if you remember correctly, in the last few episodes, like, like the late, earlier, earlier episodes, we used to see that Mr. Omar, uh, Dr. Omar Essa was also a part of the Tendrick the Doid Expo. But later on resigned, right? We spoke about his resignation. So he's one of the people that are no longer there that have resigned. So now there's a letter from the Hendrik Chesa. You're responding, hey, yeah, Hendrik still uses uh, Chesa. The, hey. And Sasko, it's also funny. It's so funny because the letter from Hendrik. Okay, this is the thing that I just keep paying attention to bit by bit. So the letter from Hendrik to do it when his committee, which has been suspended by Sas Sasko. And obviously, if he replace them with the reverse delegate, meaning they're not long recognized, they still issue their letters with the FIDE logo and the SASCOC logo. Crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, there, there is a DSO, madam, re resignation of Mr. Ngayanga. Dear Mr. May, thank you for your letter dated 13th of uh, December 2023. The ongoing discussion about Ms. Ngayanga's role on the Chess, uh, Chess SA Executive Board. Expo has been a matter of consideration or uh, considerable attention since 2021. Mr. Nguanga has not fully attended a single Expo meeting and has only been present for portions of a few meetings without offering prior apologies. This absence, we believe, has adversely affected the development of school level chess and represents a failure in his obligations towards young chess players. Moreover, there have been no elections within the South African Schools Chess Association Saska since 2017. How's that your business? Anyway, maybe it is. I don't know. Since 2017, and the legitimacy that elections that election is under and the legit, legitimacy of that election is under scrutiny, as no participating member was in good standing. Mr. Nguenga, Mr. Nguenga's portion as schools president has never been officially confirmed through election. And his um and his appointment to the Chess SA Executive Board remains contentious. Contentious. We have deliberate. We have deliberated on numerous occasions about invoking Article Twenty Four Point One Five to formally acknowledge Mr. Nguyen's constitutional resignation. However, we initially refrained from this action, hoping to support Saska in addressing their internal compliance and election issues. Wait. Saska's recent decision to recall Mr. Nguyenga is unfortunate but necessary for progress. We trust this will be an opportunity for Saska to introspect and streamline their operations. See yours sincerely. Oops. HP Dudoid, President. Wait. Does this mean they don't have a sec? Oh, yes, they don't have a secretary. Now, if you look down again, you'll see. That's so fun. That's so interesting. Because now, after, at the end of this letter, which we're not going to try and break down because it's really not... It, it doesn't make sense in many in many ways so i don't know they accept or they don't accept but it's yeah it's a, it's a resignation but anyway they're not a structure anyway so yeah with this structure of hendrik to do it apparently if, uh, um, hendrik to do it and julie maurice and are the only people that were elected if any elections are recognized which are those ones from back back in the day the one that they had to fight in court and um, now there's other members who are co-opted which is treasurer ashley fermark Secretary is no, it's, there's no one. And there's a provincial representative, Lini Kukumur. Now I found out Lini Kukumur is a she, and she had apparently resigned. I don't understand, but maybe uh, decided to come back. This is crazy. And then now there's provincial representative, Preeti Mahamba. And then there's um, now, funny enough, provincial representative, Justin Wilkin. If you can check on the previous letter, Justin Wilkin, whose name was not there. But now in this letter, Justin Wilkin's name is there. Why are they including Justin Wilkins name? Did they you now finally rope him back on? Because apparently Justin Wilkins had resigned. And I'll just read his resignation for you in a second. And there's player, player's commission, Motupili Khao, 
expert representative Tampa Nene. So now it's true resignation. There's Nanga there's Nanga resignation. There's Mabusela resignation. Uh, we know that Omar Esa has resigned. We know um, uh, Justin Wilkin has resigned. We know a lot of other people have resigned. So if those people, if they were going to recognize that uh, Justin Wilkin, Wilkins and Wilkin is not part of this executive committee, it will be Hendrik, Judy Marie, Ashley Fermak, Lenny Kukumur, Priti Mahamba, Motu Pilekau, and Tambanen. Seven people. All right. So now again, I'm going to just try and find that uh, resignation by... Um, What's his name? The resignation by uh, Mr. Justin Wilkin. So his resignation was as follows. Hi, everyone. It seems that elections are going ahead and the chess public is involved in full force. So maybe Henry wish to say, hey, don't worry about those elections. They won't happen. One, two, three. Because he was playing, he was plotting his objections and his petitions and all of his things, right? But then now uh, it dawned on Mr. Wilkin that, hey, these things are going ahead. So yeah, hi everyone. It seems that the chess elections are going ahead and the full public is involved in full force. Since I was taken aboard um, Chessa to, to assist in this process, I don't think I can add any value to Chessa until I can I can um, offer any positive contribution. All right. So my other role of selector also is also bad. Yeah, you know, it's also bad. No fruit as Chessa was suspended. I therefore resign with immediate effect. I think the most important part is I therefore resign with immediate effect he's resigned so you don't count him amongst your own or oh, you don't recognize the resignation you still want to choose um to uh, i don't know it's yeah it's 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 what it is it's that way so that's what's re that's what's happening with uh, around the issue of handled to do it it is not an interesting one we know we can see that uh he's serious about um his fight it's going to and in tears. I don't know for whom, but it's not going to end well. It's not going to end well if he wins. It's not going to end well if he loses. It's just going to be a back and forth process that we're going to be keeping. We're going to keep talking about. All right. Now back to the issue of AJCC, the African Junior Chess Championships. So the African Junior Chess Championships that were held in the, um, in, the in the recent days. So they just concluded, uh, I think, on the was it the tenth of September, the tenth of, of of December. Sorry. So. I noticed, obviously, I've, 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 been, I've been made aware of the fact that there are some players who were denied um, uh, uh, their title. So we all know that it was a title uh, event. Uh, the best player, the best, the, the, the number one player in the female section or in the male section, the number one player in the female section was uh, earning the Women International Master title. Uh, well, obviously, conditionally until they meet the rating requirements, which is, um, what is it, 2,000 feeder rating points. And again, in the um, open section, the player was, or the boys are open section, the winner would get an international master title, right? And con obviously the condition was that they get, uh, they, they, they meet the rating requirement of 2200, 2200, right? So there are, are some other requirements, obviously, that I, 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 okay, let me just get to the point. The issue is now, in the female section, apparently the winner, the winning player, whose name is, I remember fumbling with the name of this girl from uh, Algeria. Uh, let me just quickly get to it to, so that I can try and uh, pronounce it uh, better. So her name is Gerud Charezd. Charezd. And you, you read it for me and tell me what you think. Gerud, Gerud, oh, so it's Charezd, Charezd, Charezd Gerud. <laughs> Who finished the tournament with eight points out of nine, right? Eight points out of nine in a nine round tournament, making her number one in the event. And in second place, it was, um, it was, it was, it was, it was Jemima, sorry, Jemima Polo, Polo Jemima from Angola. So, Jude, we've said earlier on, she's from Algeria. And this one is from Angola. Then in third place, it was uh, Lucia Pires, who is also from Angola. So the top, the top, in the top three, I think second place and third place gets the I am norm. So it's women international master norm and so forth. <laughs> and let's focus on the women's section, on the ladies section. So here's what happened. 
if you look at that, let me just put the screen now on the on the screen now the performance of um of Giroud uh Giroud Chiras. We can see that in the first round, okay, she won um round one, round two, round three, and then round four she played the second ranking player, the second yeah the, the player in second place, which is uh, Paulo Jemima, and they drew. Then she played, she won against Yusoma Boshoma, and then she won against um, uh, Rayman, she won against uh, Ahmed, Ahmed, and then she drew against Adin Chitana, and then in the last game, she got a bye. Which means out of the nine rounds that were meant to be played, because it was a nine round event, she only played, she only actually played eight games. Which means now... She finished with seven points and was given the three points in the last round and eight round. And it's so interesting because now look at this. Um, Jemima Apollo, Apollo Jemima as well, had finished with seven points, but then she did not get a bye. So what happened with Polo Jemima is this, as follows. She won four, uh, well, she, won, she won first, second, and third round, and then drew obviously against um, Giroud. And then lost to Lamil Roa, but obviously that's a game played. You see what I mean? So she had seven points. So their seven points were the same because they both had two draws and uh, six wins. Yeah, seven wins, six wins. That make that makes the seven points. So they were basically equal until in the last round, the the the, the, the system decides to give this player on seven points a bye. Which is crazy, but it's not crazy. Because why? Guess how many players were in the event? It was 11 players. Which means in every round, almost. I think it will be two, one or two players will be spared of the, what, of the, of, of, of the buy. So there will be a player getting a buy in every round. Out of the nine rounds. So two players won't get the buy. But nine of them would get the buy. Because there's 11 players and only nine rounds. So yeah, that may be of, 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 of a, little, a little bit off. But that's just what it is. So uh, some players will get the buy. Most players, in fact, will get the buy. And it so happened that even the player with the highest re re results at the end almost got a buy in the last round, which is pretty crazy. Because maybe the person that was supposed to be getting a buy had already gotten a buy. All the others had already gotten a buy. So now here's what looks interesting. It means, number one, either one of them could get the buy. So if this, if the buy didn't go to Giroud, it would have probably go, gone to Jemima, right? <laughs> so the buy was still an inconvenience because according to feeder rules for a player to qualify for a title for a direct title uh conditional title whatsoever they need to have played nine rounds they need to have played the nine rounds and this girl did not play the nine rounds and it was not her fault that the nine rounds were not played whose fault was it it was the arbiter and organizer the chief arbiter's fault and the chief organizer's fault because they were aware that with 11 players, they had to have been aware. In a nine round event, some players, most players definitely would get by. We get a buy. So they needed to, in fact, organize an extra player from the local federation. Because that obviously would minimize the costs. And then have 12 players playing. If they can't do that, then obviously get from, it, uh, from the next federation. If they can't get from this federation, like there's many, many countries. I'm sure they could have invited any player from any country. Well, this, is, this is an opportunity any player would have loved to take, to, to take advantage of. So how come? That is an interesting question. So I got involved. I've, 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 I've got into some discussions with um, some uh, FIDE uh, uh, international arbiters to discuss with them um, on the issue. And these are the few things that they shared with me. So yeah, uh, one, one thing which I'm going to try and share here, it's um, yeah, some, com some comments from international abbots of Marius Ferreira and international abbots of Simbaresh, um, um, uh, um, Moremi, Moremi Simbaresh. But the thing about them is that they've obviously been involved in international events, which obviously were um, a, uh, 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 awarding titles, right? Simba, you remember in last year's, uh, I.A. Simba was the uh, chief arbiter at the GM uh, NOM event, uh, which is the Moja Open, the GM NOM and I.M. NOM event. And uh, Myra Sperra, I.A. Myra Sperra was involved in the, in the Zonals and a lot of other events, I'm sure. But yeah, I was going to speak to them, but hey. <laughs> so yeah, so the first comment is things about direct title. With, um, yeah, direct title, automatic title. Title is a title gained by achieving a certain place or result in a tournament. 
On application by the Players Federation or confirmation by the Qualification Commission, such titles are awarded automatically by FIDE. For a FIDE or for a direct title to be awarded immediately, an applicant has to have achieved at some time a minimum rating as follows. I am for I am 2200 for Women International Master 2000. So yeah, if an applicable uh, applic if an applicant is rated lower, the title is awarded conditionally and will be awarded finally one uh, on request by the respective federation as soon as the minimum rating is achieved. Any player with a conditional title may take a lower title when they reach the required uh, rating for that lower title. So that means they could get CM or FM if they get to 2100 or 1900, 1800 if that's a female title. So the minimum score is 35% for all titles and norms. So that means out of the nine rounds, you needed to have at least three point or oh, three point five points. I don't know what's thirty five percent of nine points. Yeah, calculate. So yes. So for continental, subcontinental, or approved com uh, competitions of FIDE international affiliates, a title or result can be achieved if at least one third or five of the appropriate member federations, whichever is lower, participate in the event. So the min minimum number of participants in the event is 10 the minimum number of rounds is nine minimum 10 participants then that way they could make it a round robin everyone is here and everyone will play and every game will be played so the number of games games per day is not more than two administrator in charge it has to be an international arbiter or feed the arbiter because they want someone who knows these things right so they can assist the organizer so the number of games is minimum nine so now this one may prove problematic if the winner had a buy. So that's what he says. So let us look at the individual uh, things. Her rating is 1654. So that is way below the required uh, the requirement for a direct title IM. So it can only be awarded conditionally and awarded once she reaches that rating. And I ask, but for it to be conditionally awarded, the player still needs to have covered the minimum requirements such as the games played. Yes. You see what I mean? The current rating will only determine whether the player is uh, directly awarded or conditionally. <clears throat> so now, <laughs> the problem is that the number of, uh, of, 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 of games played. This lady, this girl, only played eight games. And it's only because of the arbiter, chief arbiters and organizers. I don't know if they had the powers at the end to manipulate the system because if they recognize it at the end again they were already wrong because if it wasn't this one who was in trouble it would have been the one that came on second place because one of them was due for that um that buy at this point and they both had seven points see what i mean but then again it's so crazy because even if they had made because now again, it seems like the player on the second place as well has been denied this title. Because she also finished on seven points, just like uh, the player on first place has finished on seven points. Couldn't they, so crazy, have them tied on first place? Hey, with that, I, I don't know, man. That, that Because now, if, if they made them, at least all three of them tie first place, uh, oh, no, all two of them tie first place because they both had 7.7 points with that buy point not counting, not providing a buy for the last round. Who provides a, a buy for the last round for a tackle event to a person who stands to become the winner of the event? And they win because of that buy. Hey, I'm going to go on for too long and too much. And this is so crazy. But anyways, this is it for that event. And I'm just hoping that um, I'm going to get to speak to some people because I'm just opening up invitation for people that can speak up on this so we don't have issues like this happening. Because I tell you, we were so frustrated. Like, there are a lot of these players went there for that title win, that title. They wanted it. They'd like to come out first place would mean I get the title. Women International Master title. International Master title. So obviously second place and third place get it in uh, the, the title norm. Which means they need two more norms at least they are a step towards it but i mean you understand if you finish second place like ah, i still get the norm that's good but hey i wanted the title so now if you finish first place and they tell you you are finishing first place but you still can't get the title because we made a mistake i think the acc african chess confederation needs to intervene um i don't know do something about this like this I don't know what can be done, but something needs to be done. This, it's not the girl's fault. It's the organizers and arbiters' fault. 
I'm sure that is something that that's something that can be done. There's some letter that can be written and say, hey, please, man. Oh, again, if she gets awarded, the girl in second place as well must be awarded the same title because they finished on the tie. That last bye game, finish with the bye, shouldn't count. Abitus, get involved. Please, let's hear your voices. Let's hear your opinions. Let's hear you say what, uh, what, what you understand to be the best practice or the best solution from this problem going forward. Because if we don't discuss them, if we don't get to the bottom of it, it might happen again by someone for other reasons. Woo! This has been Chess Annoying. Remember to subscribe. Remember to subscribe. Good evening.